glory to God. It was in Jesus Christ. So when he came, the idea was to give us his life. He says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. You see, the flesh being his body that was broken for us. So when we partake of the communion, those are the things that we are actually affirming that the body of Jesus, when it was broken, it was given to different to different people. It was given to different people to bring us into the unity of faith. So what my wife organized yesterday, oh Lord, glory to God, it was just awesome. Thank God. You know, I was uh, so tearful. I normally don't do that when I saw all the people that came in, some that I did not even expect. The program, you know, the way it ran smoothly, I did not expect that to happen. But that is God's idea of a church. This is what he originally wanted. And this is what he wants. This is what he is driving us towards as a church. You know, I don't believe that when we come into the unity of faith, that we continue being Zimbabweans, we continue being English, we continue being separated by our cultures. No, Christianity on its own, it is a culture. It has brought us one into Christ. That's why the Bible says we ought to be transformed, be renewed. We have to grow up into the unity of faith. That is the vision of Open Door Christ Center as we are doing so, raising up people. You know, whether we like it or not, some might say raising warriors, are we, are we warriors? You know, Christianity should be smooth. No, listen, in this world, there are battles. We are here to fight battles. There are things that you are dealing with right now in your household, that you are dealing with with your children, that you are dealing with in your body. Listen, it's a warfare. Glory to God. That's why Paul writes, we wrestle not against flesh nor blood. It's against the principality. But when we come together as the body of Christ, Jesus said this, unto this rope, I will build my church. My church it's no longer an individual. It's no longer just open door, Christ center at the corner of the ears somewhere. No, it is us coming corporately. I think what the enemy did with the, this pandemic, he actually didn't realize that he was bringing us to the fulfillment of scripture. He has brought people together that could not have normally come together. Glory to God. So this is what God has been doing behind the scene. Listen, the devil cannot win. He is a fool. He's been defeated, right? When we see him winning, we are actually giving him the victory that he doesn't have, right? So when we come together unto this rope, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He is not talking about just building all DCC, Open Door Christ Center there. No, no, no. We are an arm of other ministries. We are sort of that bread that was broken that God has put us there. So the idea of Open Door Christ Center, that's why our name, that's where I get this name from. God gave me this name in 2000. And seven is one of the things that I wrote down. Lord, I want to have an open door Christ center where people can come together from different walks of life, from different cultures. That you begin to raise us up, recognizing the gifts that are at work inside of us in each and every one of us. So I, I was believing God for this. It's something that I put down, and to see it come to pass yesterday on my own birthday, it was so phenomenal. I was seeing that which I believed God for. I was seeing that which I petitioned God for, it's important to write down petitions, it's important to write down the vision, glory to God, to make it plain. So I was seeing that that is where my heart has always been, that Lord, you said you will build your church, you know, you said you will build your church, you know, when God says he will build his church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. When I see the gates of hell prevailing against what this is, it means there is something wrong. It means there is something wrong with us as a ministry. It means we need milk. We need to grow. When I see the, 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 the devil prevailing against my household, it means there is something wrong. He says the case of hell shall not prevail against the church. Glory to God. So if I understand the revelation that I'm a church, if the case of hell is prevailing against me, maybe. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing the brother that God has sent my way. Maybe I'm not seeing the sister that is anointed in that field, in that area where I am facing defeat. Maybe I'm not seeing. That's why as a minister of the gospel, every minister that spoke yesterday, we have gone, me and my wife, to their churches. We have saved them, glory to God. Not looking for, for fame, not looking for money, not looking for honorarium, not looking to be seen. But we went even behind the scenes. Whatever they asked us to do, we did it. What were we doing? We were sowing seeds of what Christ demonstrated. You see, when Jesus stooped down, 
to wash the disciples' feet. That's what he has called us to be. That's what open door Christ understands for. When we begin to wash each other's feet, it's not us washing each other's feet physically, no. To wash people's feet is to save them. See, the greatest amongst you shall be saved. Because as we begin to save one another, glory to God, we will see ourselves growing. We will see ourselves becoming that which God has called us to be. We will see ourselves rising up like an edifice, glory to God. And then scripture comes to fulfillment. What scripture? Isaiah 54, verse 17. What does it say? No weapon from the against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn. That is the church now. We condemn that tongue together. We condemn that tongue together. We begin to come against cancerous, rebellious cancerous selves. We come against poverty. We come against everything. That is generational glory to God. We are coming as a body. What are we doing? We are acting out scripture. What Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, you know, they am I in their midst. Whatsoever they bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever they loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see, we begin to fulfill scripture as we come into the unity of faith. That's why it's important in Jesus' name to, for us to grow in the things of God, glory to God, to desire that sincere meal, that we can grow. You see, the enemy, what he uses to destroy any organization is division. Right from the Garden of Eden, we see the devil came in. He divided Adam and Eve. We saw Eve now leading, glory to God, going to a tree that she was not meant to go to. It was not Eve's fault. That is the strategy of the enemy. That's why we ought to guard our hearts, even in ministry, even in your family. You want to guard your heart. You want to walk in forgiveness. You want to walk in unity, glory to God. You want to cause, I like what um, uh, Mrs. Utete was saying, right, Lord, that when I come to you, I want to have added something of value in this place. So you want to guard your heart that wherever you are, you are the one that brings unity to the body of Christ. As Jesus said, blessed are the peace keep us for they shall inherit the kingdom so as much as it has to do with you that's romans 12 right as much as it has to do with you live in with in peace with all men live in peace with all men so you want to bring the fulfillment of god's vision on it he is building his church since he is building it the case of hell shall not prevail let's turn to john 17 john 17 from verse 20 John 17, 20, glory to God. John 17, 20. This is the prayer of Jesus when he was praying for, for, for the church. Glory to God. And I ask, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. I want you to take note of this. You see, if we see the enemy prevailing in our lives, it's a mirage. It's a lie. The devil is a lie. He should not prevail. See, Jesus said in John 8, before we, we get to John 17, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You are a child of the most high God. You are special to God. God paid for you with his own special blood, glory to God. And he blessed you to be the church. The church is not a building, glory to God. What we saw yesterday in my birthday, but it was not a building. It, is, it was us sitting in our, the comfort of our own homes, but having fellowship with each other. Glory to God. Uh, apparently, I was the one who was the focus of everything. <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. But people came together. Glory to Jesus. They came together. You see, that is the church. The church is you. You are the church. If you go to Afghanistan, there is no building called the church. You are the, you are the church of God there. And all of Afghanistan, if they are under demonic influence, they cannot prevail against you. If you come to the revelation of the truth, you shall know the truth, glory to God. And the truth shall make you free, right? You shall know the truth. Let's find out. John 17, verse 20. And I ask, not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. We have a message in Open Door Christ Center, is to raise warriors for Christ. Looking at the twofold gospel, glory to God, that Jesus was crucified for our sins. If he died, what will we be doing in sin? Glory to God. We were baptized into him. We died with the him. Glory to God. So our flesh, this is our vehicle. It's no longer us. We are now 
Number two, the second part of the gospel, the new creation. We are now in him. That is the message that we have. You see, we should not allow our flesh to dictate to us glory to God. We should subject our flesh to the truth which is the word of God. We should not allow our feelings. You know, feelings, they lie to us all the time, especially sometimes even the way we reason. You know, you, you can sit on your own and be gossiping. <laughs> so he, he thinks he, you, you know, maybe that's the wife, you know. He, he, he really, he, you, you are gossiping on your own. You are talking, you are talking bad about your wife. You are talking bad about your husband. You are talking bad about the people around you. You are talking bad even about other believers. You are talking bad about people at work. That is what the enemy does. He is sowing the wrong seed. But when we know the truth, you know, when we have come to the revelation of the truth, I'm a new creation, glory to God. Even what they have meant, if it was for evil, Father, you have commanded me to bless the glory to God. You begin to see the work of the enemy. You begin to come against the work of the enemy. You begin to wage warfare against those strongholds that the enemy tries to... In we need to realize we are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are not fighting against your children. You are not fighting against your spouse. You are not fighting against other believers. You are not fighting against your work colleagues. No, there is an enemy that is at work behind the scenes. I was talking to somebody earlier on today. I said, listen, when you look at people, don't look at what they are doing in the flesh. Look at what is behind what is pushing them? Then when you understand what is pushing them, you will know how to pray for them. And also, when you look at people when they are preaching, when they are doing something, don't always look at the words coming out of their mouth. Look at what is behind, what is the anointing at work in their life. Then you would be able to receive from them. Because most of the time we can't receive. We cannot come to the revelation of the message. Glory to God. We don't come to the revelation of the message. Do you know why? Because the flesh is detecting. It's detecting how we see things. It's not the spirit. That's why we need to grow, as Paul says. You grow the inward man. This new creation, you declare upon yourself, I died with Christ. I refuse to see brother so and so from the flesh. I refuse to see my wife from the flesh. I refuse to see my husband from the flesh. I refuse to see my manager from the flesh. In this organization, I am in the channel of change, glory to God. Yes, they might be crazy. People are crazy. They are crazy people out there, glory to God. Yes, they might be crazy, but I'm not going to allow their craziness to influence me. Yes, my children might be rebellious, but I'm not going to allow them to move me out of alignment. Lord, I died with you, glory to God. I was raised as a new creation. That is the message, glory to God, that we have. This is the message that raises us up to be the warriors that God has called us to be. See, we are not of this world. You are not of this world. You are special. When you say yes to Christ, to, to, to Christ you ceased to be earthly. You ceased to come into this world, to, to, to be associated with this world. You became a new creation, glory to God. You became a child of the most high God. Yes, your father and mother might have forsaken you. Your father might not have been there for you, but guess what? God, the father himself, adopted you as his very own. Ephesians 1 says he chose you. He chose you. You see, he looked around and he saw, yes, with all your fault, with all your deformities, with everything that, you know, is contrary to the very nature of God. God says, no, I see that one. I love that one. I had to pick that one. You are special. You are unique. That's why I always say even in OTCC, your DNA is unique. Your fingerprint match, it is unique. So you need to align your way of thinking along this line, I'm unique. I refuse to operate in strife. I'm unique. I refuse to be jealous. I'm unique. I refuse to be bitter. I'm unique. I refuse. I refuse to operate outside peace. Glory to God. So you want to come in to bring yourself into alignment to that peace of God. Glory to God. Because as you do so, you become an assassin of darkness. You become that warrior that God has called you to be. Remember what the enemy wants 
people to be bitter because he understand according to Hebrews, I think it's 12 or 13, don't allow the root of bitterness to grow on the inside of you. He wants you to be bitter because once you are bitter, I will tell them my peace of mind. You know, I will tell them no one can cross my path and get away with it. They will see who I am. No, that is not the Christian life. You lay down your life even when people put you down. It's not that you are weak. Glory to God. It is when you are strong, when you save people. It's when you are strong, when people kiss you and you begin to bless them. You begin to pray for them and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless that brother over there. Bless that sister over there. The enemy gets confused when you begin to pray for the spouse that is not doing what they meant to do. And say, Father, in this marriage, I'm the one that is going to bring change. I'm going to be the one that is a redeemer. No, you, 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 you have come out of the world. In that family where there is chaos, he says, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak life in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to speak the words of the enemy. You see, that is why we ought to grow in the things of God. Because if you don't grow in the things of God and understand the twofold gospel, Christ died for our sins. So I'm no longer a sinner. I've been born again. I've been translated from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of light. Since I am now in the kingdom of light, I should not operate like the world. I should not operate like a sinner. I now need to speak light. When darkness is trying to prevail, I am the one who is the solution. See yourself as a solution. When there is trouble, see yourself as a solution. I've often shared this testimony when I went to a Benny Hinn crusade, that was 2008, I was a volunteer there saving. You know, I was like, what can I do? Because God opened a portal for me in, in Benny Hinn ministries. Every time when God opens a portal, I want to receive from that portal that God does for me. So I built an altar. What can I do? Hi, Lord, I have to volunteer. So I volunteered. I went and I was saving, I was saving, selling the books and everything. As we were selling books, we were giving stuff. And then these ladies, they started fighting. You know, one of the portraits that was given to one of the ladies went missing. So this lady was accusing the other lady. So I had this nice portrait. You know, all friends say, oh, my wife will enjoy this when I bring it home. It was the footstep portrait. They are fighting each other. I said, no, ladies, we cannot fight. This is in a meeting, in a church, glory to God, called a church anyway. It, they were fighting. I took that portrait. I gave it to the other lady. The fighting ceased, glory to God. But in my heart, you know, I was like, oh, oh, oh. there goes my portrait. But there was a great seed that was sown. The harvest is coming. It is great, glory to God. Because whosoever sows peace, he reaps righteousness, glory to God. You see, you want to rise up in your family, in your church family, in your work family, in your biological family. You want to be the channel of peace, glory to God. You want to be the one that is a peacemaker. You understand, no, Father, I'm the bolt of light. I am the light of the world in this place. I am the light of the world wherever I go. I refuse to be offended. Listen, offenses, they will come your way, but you have to fight against them. You have to fight against being offended. You have to fight against everything that will come against you. You have to also fight the desire. You know, sometimes when you are offended, you really want to tell people Right, you really want to make them know. Well, sometimes you use scriptures or verses. <laughs> right, I'm gonna use verses and scriptures. I'm gonna preach like this. Then they will change. No, the, it is only the Holy Spirit that will bring build the church. It is only the Holy Spirit that can change people. Our admonishment from the Lord is to walk in love, to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Glory to God. To walk in love, in peace, in joy, in self control. When you find yourself, you have letting yourself go. Don't condemn yourself. Come back to the fold. You come back says, Lord, I'm sorry the way I've acted. I acted like a fool. But I thank you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for that precious blood of the lamb. The enemy gets confused because the enemy is an accuser of brotherhood. He wants you to operate in condemnation. I failed today. You see, so many people think it's Christianity to sit there and wallow in condemnation, to sit there and meditate on why you made that mistake. Listen, the best of us, we make mistakes. Glory to God. Every person makes mistakes. That's why we need Jesus Christ. You look unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. As you continuously look unto Jesus, guess what? 
you are changed. You become better, but you have to want to look. You have to want to come out of the flesh. You have to want to operate in the spirit. It has to be a desire that comes from you. It is nothing that somebody can force on you. Glory to God. No one can enforce it on you. As a Christian, you have to have a desire to mature. You have to have a desire that, no, 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 no. This year, 2021, I'm going to put the things of God first. Glory to God. I'm going to put Jesus first. I'm going to grow in him. I'm going to mature in him. You write down what causes you to be offended, what causes you to be stressed, what causes you to be depressed. You put it there and say, Lord, I refuse this thing to put me down. I make a decision. Yes, you might fail after you have made those decisions, but you come back again and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know what I am doing. You already dealt with it. 2,000 years ago, I'm already a new creation. You continuously affirm that new creation that is inside of you. You continuously affirm that I died with Christ. I've been raised with Christ. I am a new creation. Glory to God. I'm born from above. Yes, Lord, I thank you. I think as you continuously say these things over your life, I refuse to look at women less fully. I refuse to gossip. I refuse to slander. You see, these things will come against you. Those feelings that will come. Don't hide them. Glory to God. Come against them with the word of God. Listen, when the enemy came against Jesus to tempt him, it is not that we saw a man wearing a, a red suit with the horns and the tail. No, those were thoughts. Those were demonic thoughts that were arrayed against Jesus. If you are the son of God. See, there are times we cooperate with the thoughts. We don't realize that these thoughts are demonic. Glory to God. And we think, see, the way the enemy operates, he is so cunning. We think those thoughts, they are ours. Then we start acting out, you know, because you think it is you. No, it is not you. Glory to God. Your thoughts, they are pure. You have the mind of Christ. You grow that mind of Christ. Glory to God. So when you feel those thoughts of division, those thoughts of strife, those thoughts of jealousy, glory, you have to come against them. You have to recognize them and nip them immediately. I was talking to my wife, we're talking about this. I said, do you know how I deal with the jealous uh, over other pastors that I feel they are doing great things? This is how. So I said, tell you, I said, listen, I start praising them. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless that pastor, Lord. I speak for the life upon him in the name of Jesus. And I get into my account. I start giving to their ministry. What is I'm doing? So what am I dealing with? Jealous. I'm dealing with that thought. He said, jealous is everywhere. Glory to God. But you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Because, oh, me, I don't do jealous. When those thoughts come, the enemy will always come. He will always try to assassinate you. You will always want to move you in the flesh. That's what we want to do in ODCC. So to make you realize that there is an enemy, but the weapons of your warfare, they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of those strongholds, glory to God. The weapons of your warfare, they are weapons of your weapon. You have mighty weapons. Those weapons, is, it's your mouth. Glory to God. You use your mouth. The weapons of your warfare, they are in your spirit, man. Glory to God. As you begin to grow that spirit, man, you begin to grow that spirit, man. No, no, no. Father, I thank you that I'm a new creation. You begin to grow. That is the warrior on the inside of you. That is the lion on the inside of you. You begin to roar against the things of the enemy. You begin to roar against the plans and the strategies of the enemy. You need to understand there is an enemy who wants to destroy you. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come so that they might have life and have it to the full. See, the enemy is a deceiver. The enemy is a liar. Glory to God. But you are a child of the most high God. You are born of the truth. Glory to God. So this truth has to rise up on the inside of you. You have to refuse to be depressed. Depressed, Depressive thoughts, they will always come against you. Those are the weapons that the enemy is using. You come against them. You counter them with the word of God. You begin to declare, no, 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 no. Jesus did not die for nothing. He died for me. I've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You come against those thoughts in the name of Jesus. You refuse to allow them to move you out. That is the strategy of the enemy, to move you out. Right? <laughs> John 17, glory to God. And I ask not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. Verse 21, I pray for them all 
to be joined together as one. All to be joined together as one. That is the mandate of Jesus Christ, to bring us together as one. And the mandate of the enemy is the opposite of that. Glory to God. So what I then want to do, right? As an individual, Lord, do I bring unity in your body? Or do I bring division in your body? Glory to God. So when I find out that there are things in my own nature that tries to bring uh, disunity in the body, I have to grow in the word of God. Glory to God. Now, this is his prayer. God wants me to be one. I said, Father, I make a decision to be the channel of unity. I make a decision, Father God, this afternoon, that even in my family, in my household, to be the channel of unity. There are times that that unity cannot be established. Glory to God. But you want to be like an Abraham. See, when there was crisis between Lord Sedman and Abraham's husband, see, Abraham called Lord. He brought Lord together with him and says, Lord, seeing that we are brethren, you know, we cannot stand and afford to fight. Choose where you want to go. If you choose the left, I will take the right. If you take the right, I will take the left. That was Abraham. See, look at his attitude. It was him that God called after all, right? So you want to be the bigger person. The bigger person is always the one that will always bless. Glory to God. So you want to assume that role. You don't want it to be, ah, Lord, this is my vision. God called me. No, glory to Jesus. You want to be the bigger person. Sometimes even as parents with grown-up children, be the bigger person. Because Lot was like a son to Abraham. Be that bigger person. You know, sometimes separation can come within families, biological families. Don't try to mend that which is broken. Because at the end of the day, as long as Abraham and Lot dwelt together, there was division, there was strife. You see, the Bible says in James 3, 16, where there is strife and envy, there is all manner of evil work. There is no unity. Glory to God. It says there is all manner of evil work. And this is what the Bible says again, I think it's verse 17. It says this wisdom is not from God. It's from below. It's demonic. It is earthly. It is carnal. So you want to come from a place that is above. You want to come from a place where the wisdom of God is sweet. It's awesome. It is peace. It's joyous. You want to make that decision that no, I'm not going to allow demonic things to operate through me. I'm not going to allow to, myself to be that source of strife. You know, I want to allow myself to be the source of blessing. Listen to what Abraham says. Choose. And Lord, because he did not have wisdom. It's not that Lot was evil. No, it's not that sometimes when you separate with people, people are evil. They are not evil, glory to God. Sometimes people don't rise up to that stage of maturity. You see, Lot, if he was mature, he could have realized that, no, all that I have, it was Father Abraham. You see, he had come to a place that I acquired this by myself. I got this by myself. He did not realize that as long as he associated with Abraham, he was going to be blessed. As long as he associated with Abraham, he was going to be enriched. But Abraham recognized that as long as I have strength, uh, as long as I have strife with my brother, Lord, I cannot increase. He understood that. You see, that was the principle of God. You see, you want to always be one with other believers. You want to always be one in your marriage, husband and wife. You want to be one in family, glory to God. But when somebody chooses to separate themselves, there is nothing you can do about it. You see, Abraham did not find, oh Lord, where is Lord going? Remember, Abraham did not have a son. He thought Lord was going to be his son. He thought Lord was going to inherit that, but there had to be a separation. There are times even in families, there has to be a separation. There are times even in churches, there has to be a separating, a separation. That's why you make a decision, even as a pastor, way advanced, that when God moves another member to somewhere else, you make that conscious decision to bless them, not to hold them back. You make that decision not to be a channel of, they will see. They have left my ministry. They will see what to like. No, 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 no. That is not Christianity. You see, Abraham blessed Lord, and he was left in a barren land. Glory to God. But God descended to Abraham. He saw that Abraham was destroyed because it is not easy to separate. It's not easy to separate as families. It's not easy to separate sometimes parents with children. It's not easy to separate husband and wife. It's not easy is because what that has been joined together when something has become one it's not is even as a past it's never easy to lose a member unless if you are not a true shepherd it's never easy glory
glory to God to see a member going through trials and tribulations and you are rejoicing, they will see. No, glory to God. We want to have that heart of the Father. We have the heart of the Father on the inside of us. We are the ones that are the channel of unity. We are the ones that are the channel of blessing. But when that separation comes, you want to stand before God. And you want to worship God. You want to trust God and let go of that person and release them. Because if you don't release them to God, then what happens is this, you are going to be bitter, you are going to be critical, you are going to be releasing waves of curse upon their lives, you are going to be destroying them with your waves, but you want to release them. That's how you become a warrior, glory to God. That's how you fight. See, Abraham released the Lord, and then God descended. Says Abraham, why are you destroyed? God had already told him that he would bless him. All nations on earth will be blessed. What's this? Psalms 133, verse 1 to 3. How good, how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's like that oil that has been poured out on the head of Aaron. You know, it flows through that garment of Aaron, reaching every uttermost part of that garment. Glory to God. It's speaking about the church, how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity. I was talking about the church of the living God because it's impossible for people to be one. Glory to God. People are different. We live in a, in a fallen world, but in Christ Jesus, we have been brought together. In Christ Jesus, we have become one. In Christ Jesus, this is the prayer of Jesus for the prayer for the church. I pray for them all to be joined together as one, as, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. That is in Christ Jesus. We have come together. There is no longer Devele. There is no longer there is no longer Jamaican, there is no longer Trinidadian, there is no longer English, there is no longer white. That was the purpose of the change, glory to God, to come together in Christ, becoming one. But you see, what the enemy wants is to bring separation, because where brothers and sisters dwell together in unity, God commands a blessing. He instructs a blessing. The blessing comes running to overtake you, glory to God. That's why it's important as a child of God, God, to rise up, you know, in your own unique way and recognize that God's plan and purpose is to bring the body of Christ into unity. You refuse to be a source of, of division. God comes. He blesses Abraham. He says, as far as you can go, the earth is blessed because of you. Why does God come to Abraham? Because he saw what was in his heart. He did not fight with his brother, Lord. No, he could not. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 19, God comes. In Genesis chapter 18, he comes to Abraham. Should I hide this to Abraham? Seeing what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. Seeing what I'm about. Lord is about to suffer damnation. Abraham does not rejoice. That is the heart of a warrior. Glory to God. You don't rejoice because somebody is going through calamity, whether they were in division with you. Glory to God. You don't rejoice because somebody is suffering, whether they were in division with you. I have heard some prayers. I pray, I pray dangerous prayers. You know, that person had to be eradicated. That person had to go through this. Ah, not my God. My God does great things. You know, there are some that pray fire over people, not Abraham. Abraham understood the heart of God. The heart of God is to save. The heart of God is to bring people into unity. That's why we need to grow with this heart. We need to grow with this attitude. He that interceding. This is a father. You know, God, if you find 50 righteous people, will you still destroy the, the Sodom and Gomorrah? And this is what God says. No, I will not. Because God's plan is to save. John 3, 17, he sent his son not to destroy the world. That people will be saved through the son. Is the son here today? Absolutely not. But you are here. Glory to God. Be that channel of salvation to people. Be the one that will preach the message of unity. Be the one that brings people together. That brings people into unity. That makes people one. Glory to God. Like yesterday, oh, it was awesome. It was great. You know, my wife really, she, she did herself. You know, I was, just, I was just so blessed. When people came together in unity, we bring people together in unity. That is the plan of God. But when there is a separation, be the one that is interceding. Glory to God. Let's round up the message. Now watch this. I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize. You sent me, right? So that the world will recognize that you sent What do you think was happening yesterday? God was saying, this is it. That's it. Glory to God. May our sin fulfillment of prophecy is ours rejoicing. Glory to God. People coming together in unity. We're all laughing. We're all enjoying. We're all having fun. That was God's plan. Glory to God. But there were some that had to pray 
for that to happen. There were some that had to go to bed later on in the hours of the morning for that to happen. They said, Lord, we are praying that this thing will go out away. Lord, we are doing this. They were interceding, glory to God. That is what we do. Sometimes you might not be in the platform, but intercede for that unit. Sometimes you might not say anything. Intercede for that unit. Watch this. So that the world will recognize that you send me. The world cannot recognize that Jesus has been saying, there's division. No, can't be the channel of unit. Look at verse 22. For the very glory you have given to me, I have given them. He says, God has given you the glory. It's inside of us. So what does the enemy, what is the enemy after? What does the devil want? See, the Bible says, instead of shame, God will give you glory. Instead of shame, God will give you glory. Whatever you have gone through, now this is my cue. Glory to God. Whatever you've gone through, whether it has brought shame in you, there is a glory. Jesus was crucified on the cross. Why was he crucified? That is the body that was broken for us. Glory to God. So that we come into unity. Glory to God. When he was on the cross, that was shame. He was naked on the cross. But when he was raised up with the glory, with the power, now the same glory that was in Jesus' life, it's the same glory that is inside of you. When you see division, the enemy is after the glory that is inside of you. Glory to God. So you rise up. I'm a child of glory. No, I'm born of glory. No, thank you, Father God. You want to be glorified. Yes, things might have been bad. Yes, people might have assassinated you. Yes, the marriage might have been bad when you suffered the divorce. Yes, the parents might not have been there. Yes, the manager might be rough. Yes, the family members or parents or whatever. Yes, 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 yes. You might have gone through what you've gone through but refused to respond according to the old creation. Christ died for you. You are a new creation. Glory to God. You are called into a life of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. For the very glory you have given to me, I have given them so that they would be joined together as one. Watch this. And experience, and experience the same unity that we enjoy. You live fully in me. Now, I live fully in them. You live fully in me. This is God. You live fully in me. Now I live fully in them. There is no need for you to be in shame. You are a child of glory. You are tremendously blessed. Thank you again for celebrating me, celebrating and honoring my birthday. And thank you again for Open Door Christ Center, all our leaders in Open Door Christ Center, all the men of Open Door Christ Center, Mr. Piri, Mr. Tuwe, Mr. Otete, and those that I've not mentioned, and all the ladies of Open Door Christ Center. You know, it's a heartfelt thank you for me and my wife to appreciate you for all your prayers, all your dedication, all your commitment to the vision that God has given us. You you saw yesterday that is the vision of open door crisis people coming together all of us coming together into unity glory to god and all that have joined us in zoom coming in praying for us my biological sisters sister lynn and brother joe and everybody that is coming glory to god and my mother who has prayed for us for us to be here we thank you we celebrate you glory to god and we pray that the anointing of the holy spirit the anointing of glory that is inside of you will be seen wherever you go, that you will be a bangle of joy, a bangle of success in the name of Jesus, that anything that comes against you, your family and your household, it will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that precious blood of Jesus, that each and every person that is logged in today, Father, may they experience uncommon blessing, uncommon favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you bring them into the unity of faith. Kaya Lambrosi. And this, Lord, some that go to different churches, Lord, help them to be, to be, Father God, to be that channel of unity, to be that channel of peace wherever they go. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Got some announcement to make. Next week, right, we are going to have our very first Sunday service in our community center glory to god so the church is back hallelujah so it will be so nice to see all of you again as we come together in jesus mighty name glory to god we are going to have our live bible study on thursday glory to god we'll continue to communicate with our viewers on on zoom 
how are we going to structure these things? You have been such a blessing to us, and we thank God for all your prayers. Glory to God. But we are going to continue our Zoom Bible study every Thursdays, and we are going to come up with something special for our Sunday services as well, because the voice these days, it has to be from rooftops. Glory to God. That is satellite. Glory to God. That's the internet. That's the media. We have to to be there, we have a message, and our message is simple, raising warriors for Christ, preaching the twofold gospel, the cross of Calvary, where Jesus died for the sins of the entire world, and the resurrection, glory to God. He did not stay dead. He ascended to heaven. We are a new glorious creation. You are tremendously blessed. Have a wonderful, blessed afternoon. You are all blessed. Glory to God in Jesus' name.